Hi everybody, welcome to another update on the stock screener. Today we're going to talk about tankers. I have bought more tankers. Frontline, for example. I already had Artmore shipping and I bought more, I think, yesterday. So we are going all in on the tankers because they are making all time highs and typically uh, a breakout will happen. So let's just talk about the tankers i have not prepared anything but going back to our page on tankets you know tanker rates are the most important will tanker rates go up or down i think they will go up and that is based on supply and demand so supply is the red line and demand is the green line so we need to have demand go up and supply go down. And that's exactly what is going to happen. So demand comes from the amount of oil and oil products that the world needs. And that is going up. So we have 100 million barrels per day and it's going to go up to 104 million barrels per day in about a year from now. So there is demand for oil, that's one. And there's also ton mile, mile demand, which means that the tankers need to uh, ship the oil on much farther routes. So instead of uh, shipping oil from Russia to Europe, now they ship the oil from Russia to China and then to Europe. So that's an increase in mileage. So that's bullish on the demand side. So here you can see that uh, instead of doing this, they, they now go much farther routes, uh, this route here. So also we have an EU embargo, which actually went into action on the 6th, I think the 6th of February. So the embargo, uh, embargo is now in action. So post embargo, we have a seven times increase in demand due to the Russians being uh, prohibited from selling the oil. So that's bullish as well for the tankers. And look at the rates, actually. The rates, even though they went down, they are still above the five-year average. So this is the five-year average band. They are still on the high side. So when we go into February, this is typically a low seasonality. But as the oil uh, seasonality comes into play, when everyone is going to go on holiday, oil will go up in demand. So then we start having higher tanker rates. So it's only going to get better. We are still high above the band and this can go much higher in the coming uh, months. Refineries, very important. Refineries in the US are going to go offline. Many of them will go offline and never come back. And instead, in China, they will start to refine more oil. So this changes the whole dynamic. And a lot of products will need to be shipped from here to the US and to Europe. There, here you can also see refineries going offline. So the whole tanker space is going to change. So now China is the refiner and they will send all the products to these guys. So that's also good for mileage. Now on the supply side, you can see that supply is going down. A lot of demolitions are coming, not a lot of deliveries, so less tankers. They are now even using very old tankers uh, to ship the oil. 
but I mean, that's not compliant. Uh, 20 years old tankers uh, need to be demolished. Here you can also see a lot, a lot of uh, orders are now going down, so no orders anymore for the oil tankers. Order book is very low, 4.8% going lower, and this will increase prices of ships because there are not a lot of tankers left. Now, can they build these tankers? No, because they are now building the containers, bulks and the gas. So a lot of containers will come onto the market, which is why I don't buy Zim shipping. Um, also bulk is the same. A lot of bulk will come onto the market, but look at the tankers. Nobody is building tankers because they're all building these things. So that's very bullish for tanker supply. No tankers available, demolitions are going to increase in the coming years, 2024, 2026. So less tankers, um, a lot of phase outs because they are very old. So a lot of tankers will be demolished. And then we have fleet growth going negative in the coming years. So we have both increasing demand and decreasing supply. Vessel utilization rate is still at 50%. So this will start rising again. And tanker rates will, of course, rise as well as this goes up. So you can see here even no VLCCs have been uh, delivered. 2024 non-contracted so looking very good tanker rates are rising um, they went down a bit in december and january but that's seasonal like this went down a bit but now probably we will rise even more so this is the latest data Still very high, Swiss Max, Apple Max, these are oil tankers and will probably go up more as the forecasts are telling us that VLCC is going from current 30,000 to 150,000. That's a 5x in VLCC rates forecasted for the next three years. So it's looking very good. Now, you can do the calculation. If this goes up 5x, what will the earnings be? Not sure what this is. This tells us that Aframax is better than VLCC. So read it yourself. Aframax is smaller, smaller ships than VLCCs. These are very large crude carriers. So we need to focus on the Aframax. Europeans, yeah, uh, are not going to buy Russian oil anymore. So this is good for the mileage. Robert Bugby from uh, Scorpio Tankers says that we are going to see uh, the rates go to 150,000. And currently we are only at 50,000. So that's a 3x. 3x in rates, okay? So handy max, and here as well, handy max. So 3x, 5x in the coming years, minimum. Also very important, starting on the 1st of January, these ships need to have a good carbon intensity indicator rating. So they need to be eco and use less fuel. If they can't do that, then they need to run at slower speeds. So what does this mean? They need to run at slower speeds, which means that 
we need more tankers because the tankers are, are too slow. So how are you going to ship the oil? More tankers. Okay, so this is all very bullish for Artmore shipping and frontline. And I expect to see a bull run like in 2001 to 2008, where we went from 50 to 300, that's times six, right? So we, we can go back times six here, and that's uh, how much will that give? Probably 100, okay? So we are going times six on front line because PLCC rates are going to go up, probably go up. 5x so frontline could go up 10x now let's do some comparisons uh, we have i have taken five companies here artmore shipping scorpio tankers international seaways uh, tk tankers and frontline so let's look at them and see which one is the best. So Artmore is the smallest one. I bought a lot of that. Scorpio Tankers is the same as Frontline, about $3 billion. Then this is a bit smaller and TK Tankers uh, the second smallest. This is the book value, equity. This is the amount of debt. And on that debt, they have interest, it's around 6%. Then we have net income for Q3, the fleet age. And as you can see here, the fleet age is the best for Artmore shipping, Scorpio tankers and frontline. So I would avoid these two because they are very old ships probably cost more and uh, need more maintenance. So, so I would avoid these two. So these are out of the question. Um, operating earnings. Yeah, no, these are the operating costs. So what I did is I looked at the costs in Q3 without depreciation. So. So just the operating costs with admin costs and all of that. So that's the cost in Q3. And this is the leverage that they set on their presentation. So it's all about the same leverage. This is weird, but I think this 1.5 leverage is free cash flow leverage. And these are just net earnings leverage. So I took uh, my own calculation based on operating costs. So what I did is I look at the net margin and see how much leverage we have if the revenue doubles. So as you can see here, Artmore has the highest net margin. So the lowest costs is Artmore. So if you want to be safe, you can buy Artmore because they have the lowest cost. But that means that the leverage is lowest. So the leverage is only 1.2, according to my calculation. Um, Frontline has the highest leverage because they have high costs. So 26% net margin so the leverage is much higher, 2.4 leverage. So that's why I bought Frontline to have the leverage. And I also bought Artmore because this is the safest. They have low debt. PE ratio is very low, 2.7, while Frontline is already at 11. But of course, this is a bigger company, so the PE ratio is probably higher because of that. And also, yeah, frontline 
also has very low costs for their segment. So, yeah, you pay a bit of premium on that. But of course, they have a lot of leverage as well because of the high costs. So, why did I take Artmore as well? Because they have product tankers and product tankers will outperform the VLCCs, I think. Um, this has also the lowest PE ratio from all these uh, tankers. So that's also good. And yeah, the leverage is the same according to the company. But on my calculations, it's pretty low leverage. Also good fleet age. So this is a, a very good company, Artmore. And let's take a look at Scorpio tankets. As you can see here, Artmore and Scorpio are about the same. Same PE ratio, same price to book value, same leverage, same fleet age. So why do I not like Scorpio? Because they have a lot of debt. 1.1 times debt to equity. So if you are risk averse and don't like debt, then you avoid Scorpio tankers because they have a lot of debt. Um, why not take international seaways? Because yeah, they have VLCC exposure and also very high fleet age. TK tankers also not that good because the PE ratio is already at 5. So why buy 5 if you can buy 2.6? Right? So I didn't take this one. And frontline I bought because of the leverage. Low cost. I mean, look at the earnings of uh, frontline. I think they have... 80 million net income in Q3, right? And the costs, 235. That's a lot of costs, right? 235 million costs and only 80 million net income. So what is the revenue then? The revenue is cost plus net income, and that's about 300 million. So 300 million in revenue and 200 costs. So that's very high costs, right? So if the revenue goes from 300 and doubles to 600, then the net income will go up like fivefold. Right? Because it goes from 80 to 380. Because your revenue doubles from 300 to 600. So that's uh, 380. So uh, 80 to 380 is how much? Four to five times. So this has a lot of leverage if the tanker rates go up. And that's seen here. If the tanker rates for frontline go from 30,000 PLCC rate up to 150, that's a 5x in revenue, right? If this here, the revenue was 300 million, right? 300 million goes up 5x, that's 1.5 billion per quarter. And the costs are going to stay the same, right? The, the costs stay the same. So 1.5 billion minus 200 is 1.3 billion net income. Look at this, 80 million. So 80 million is going to go to 1.3 billion. How much X is that? 1.3 billion, 100 million to 1.3 billion. 
that's uh, 15x, right? So I bought this for the leverage. And you can see how fast this can go up. So I'm betting on tanker rates to go up like this. And this will give me the leverage. And this gives me the safety. Okay. So that's why we invest in the tankers. And I'll see you in the next video.